This could be another game changer. What's up guys, Andrew here on My Channel Gear Inc, where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. To my channel, it's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. And if you're like me, you probably tried to get an RTX 3080 this morning only to have it be sold out within 30 seconds, even though you had like seven websites open, and you planned all night, and you were trying your hardest, but you can't succeed anyway. If you guys were also excited like I am of the NVIDIA broadcast software that NVIDIA just rolled out this morning, then at least you have a little bit of solve for your wounds of not being able to get an RTX 3080 today. Ironically, this entire review is actually being done using NVIDIA broadcast software. And so I'm gonna show you kind of a side-by-side -side comparison using my C922. The reason this works is because a lot of the technologies that NVIDIA is rolling out already exist within ChromaCam if you have a camera that's capable of doing it. And so I thought this would be a good side-by-side -side comparison. Before you get started, there are a few things you are going to need. First is an RTX 2060 or newer card. This one is being done on an RTX 2080 Ti. Those are the ones that have the NVENC encoding it's currently supported for the NVIDIA broadcast software. The next thing you're going to need is the actual software and the driver, which is the most recent one, in order to run it. Both of these can be downloaded directly from NVIDIA's website. I'll actually have a link to the uh, NVIDIA broadcast uh, down below. Your driver, obviously, is going to depending on which um, GPU you have, and so you're going to have to look that up yourself, but you can't just download it through the GeForce Experience, which personally, I don't really care about that because I don't like GeForce Experience to begin with that much. Now, I decided to use OBS for this testing because obviously it's like the most used streaming software out there and setting it up is really easy. Once you have it installed, there are three tabs that you can use. One is for your microphone, one is for speakers, and the last one is for video effects and transitions that um, currently there are only four. Also, you can pick which resolution you want to do for your camera, which is obviously completely based on which camera you have. Now, one of the things I noticed right off the bat and just in terms of stream quality is the encoder for NVIDIA for 1080p 30fps is much more, let's say, smooth than ChromaCam. Whether that's because there's a burden or an encoding issue with uh, ChromaCam to begin with, the overall experience felt much smoother with NVIDIA just in general recording. Now, the first thing I wanted to test was a background removal tool because this is something a lot of people care about because it means you can get rid of your background without a green screen. While both ChromaCam and NVIDIA Broadcast allow you to do this, NVIDIA Broadcast is a little bit better, but I use no lighting kit because basically I wanted to see in a low light situation, if you didn't have like a direct light on front of you, which most people honestly won't, how good it was of picking up and getting rid of, you know, the background and not getting artifacting. Obviously, both of them kind of fail in that regard. So you are going to still have to use a lighting kit if you want to get a very clean background removal when you're using this software. The next thing up for test is blur. And obviously, as you can see, I'm using this pretty heavily in this video. I absolutely love how easy this was to use. ChromaCam actually does blur and it does it fairly well. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, just on this day of doing this testing, I wasn't able to get to work in OBS. In the preview, it worked just fine. And they're fairly comparable, although I am going to give a win to NVIDIA for just working honestly today. I, I spent a lot of time trying to get this to work in OBS, and no matter what I did, wouldn't work, and so I'm going to give NVIDIA kind of the win in this category. This one is pretty clean. Um, you're not seeing a lot of things behind me. I thought both of, honestly, ChromaCam and NVIDIA does this pretty well, and if you're wondering why I use this background, because obviously it was all over Reddit. I'm a huge fan of Avatar, The Last Airbender, and uh, Korra, and I like both those shows. So anyway, this is just to show you kind of what you can expect if you're going to be removing the background and adding your own. Now, the last one is the auto frame, and I've had a lot of fun with this. Essentially, what it does is it tracks your facial movement, so no matter where you're in the room, the camera actually pans to you. It's a pretty cool technology that honestly doesn't have a lot of practical applications right now. But it kind of makes you feel like you're being chased by the paparazzi and I had a lot of fun with it. So another category there for NVIDIA. Now what NVIDIA has essentially done is created a streamlined camera software versus what Chroma is currently. I did these tests at 1080p 30 frames because that's obviously pushing both of the encoding as far as it can go, which is why I believe NVIDIA, because it obviously has a much stronger encoding software, is beating out Chroma. So the reason I did this test at 1080p 30 frames per second is because I wanted to push both encoders as much as I could to see which one is obviously going to have a bigger trouble. NVIDIA's broadcast is honestly fantastic for entry-level streamers and people who just want things to be simple. And that's something I think that's honestly very good. Where they obviously lose out is if you want anything beyond just those four features because ChromaCam obviously supports a ton of different filters, backgrounds, effects that currently NVIDIA Broadcast does not. If they add these down the road, I would pick NVIDIA Broadcast at least in its current form every single time. However, this isn't something that's obviously implemented currently. And so for if you want like high-end customization for your backgrounds, it's still gonna be ChromaCam. 
So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's one of those things I've been waiting for this software. And I think moving forward, I will personally be using this not only just for streaming, but for videos like this. I mean, I really like the effect this has given me, especially because now I'm in a rental and like my usable space for videos is much smaller. So I may just move to this format. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, if you like this video, leave me a big thumbs up. If you thought it was terrible, leave me a thumbs down. Remember to get subscribed and hit that bell icon so you know when these videos drop. As always, thanks to my Patreon supporters and everyone who continues to support my video. I'll have this camera link below along with some other useful links for just getting this up and running. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear back from you. You can join the Discord of gamers and tech enthusiasts. It's all down in the description. Anyway, guys, I'm going to continue to make these videos whether you watch them or not, but I hope you do. And I hope to see every single one of you next time here on Gear Inc.